Hey, Shepard, a little change of clothes here. We're back at it. Um, listen, you mentioned those fatalities. Really tough news uh, for the city of Wilmington. The police department uh, putting out a statement a few moments ago about a woman and her infant to, who were killed when a tree fell on their home. Uh, the father of that household is now being treated at a local hospital. Uh, there's a press conference that's being set up at the Emergency Operations Center here in Wilmington, and there's going to be a press conference in a matter of moments, and we expect to get more information on that when it happens. But that was the warning that went out, and we certainly hope for, you know, no further news along this line. That um, That's really tough to take. There's a parking lot right behind us, Shepard, here. We've been out here since 6 o'clock this morning, and uh, we've been just looking at so many trees just, just, just in our line of sight, how many trees we can count that are down just in, in this area right here. And you, you extrapolate that across the town of about 105,000 people. You can just imagine uh, how much and how many people have been affected by this. Two hours ago when we spoke, I was telling you about how the wind and the rain seemed to lessen a little bit, and that was true then. And um, when you look at the future cast, and these conditions right now have come back. Um, I don't know how long they last. But if you look at the future cast, we're, we're looking at least six hours plus of conditions like these, where these bands just continue to whip around here in the Wilmington area, and the rain comes with it. Now, it lessens a little bit, but then it picks up back again like it is right now. So uh, we're in for it. Uh, long haul here, as I mentioned earlier. She is big, and she is slow, unfortunately. She is Florence, Shepard. It's still coming in like a hurricane there. Steve, what do you see? I know, Shepard. I'm hearing all this talk about this. It's a rain event and the storm is weakening. That is certainly not the case where I'm standing. This is this is very much a wind event still, and the winds are gusting about as strong as we've heard them from the very beginning. Now, it is causing structural damage. And over the last hour or two, this is the first significant structural damage that we've seen. You can see stairway here, a door here bits of roofs here. If you can look at this house behind me over here, parts of it roof has been flying off over the last hour or so. And when you look down the street, you see bits and pieces of house and down power lines. That's why it's so dangerous for anyone to come in or out of here, not just because of the wind, but because of the debris that's hidden off and under the water and those down power lines. Now, most of these houses are boarded up. A lot of the garages left open to try and get that wind cycling through but we haven't seen the soul here all day it's without electric power without cell phone service for the most part and this is oh man this is, you gotta really turn backwards just to stand up in it so the water has come over the beach there was about a 60 yard beach there it was a beautiful day yesterday afternoon and then uh the water has kept rising and now it's actually forming a little river here and going in beneath the bay. So this part of the island, the houses structurally are still standing, but bits and pieces of them are still being torn up at this late stage in this storm, Shepard. Steve, it, it's late in the storm, but you've got yes, hours sir. more of this, it looks like. Can you come back with that again, Shepard? There's more to come. Well, you know, there's nowhere we can go, really. I mean, the bridge is closed. There's so much debris. I've seen a couple of cars actually drive through power lines down the street, but, you know, Jeff Burton takes more risks than I would, and even he wouldn't go. So we turned around. So we've got a generator going. We'll be here as, uh, you know, we'll be here until it's over. If Steve, Hyber, if, if Steve Harrigan can survive the Khyber Pass, in Afghanistan, he can survive North Topsail, but I'm glad there aren't a lot of other people around there. Steve, thanks so much.